Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Wojo, and this week we're going to look at solving quadratics again, but this time we're going to do it by graphing the function. So we're going to learn a little bit about the graphs of a quadratic today. Uh, just like normal, we like to learn how to solve them, then we like to learn how to graph them, we like to see how they're intertwined. Today we're going to be solving using um, Desmos. Desmos.com is an online calculator that does graphs. Uh, one that I think you're all pretty familiar with. So this week we hope that you'll have your quizzes open. Uh, like I do here, and Desmos open, and you can even put them side by side, so that way you can go back and forth between the quizzes and Desmos. Uh, you're going to notice the problems this week are going to look really similar to last week. We're going to be solving uh, quadratic equations, x squared equations, and we're going to be looking for the x values that if I plug them in for x would make this equation true. Uh, this week, our solving method is going to be by looking at the graphs of these. So. Uh, just real quick to get into it, what you're going to need to be able to do is go over to Desmos and graph this equation. Now it says x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And just like last week when we did the quadratic formula, it'll be important that this is equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, um, then we're good to go and we can just graph it. If it's not, we're going to have to do some manipulation. Uh, for example, if this was equal to 5, uh, I would have to subtract 5 from here and subtract 5 from 3 and get x squared plus 4x plus negative 2 or minus 2 uh, because this wasn't equal to 0. But because this one is equal to 0, we're ready to graph. So let's head right over to Desmos. To start our graphs, we're going to start y equals. Um, and then we're just going to write in this equation without the equals 0. We're going to talk about where that equals 0 comes in. So I'm just going to type in y equals x squared. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, you can do shift 6 for squaring something, or at the bottom here, you might not have this, but you can just uh, click on this for the keyboard, and then your squared button's right there. So we're going to type in y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, and I don't need the equals 0 in my equation. I don't even know what would happen if you did. Yeah, I think it would mess it up. Um, and so you don't want to have equals 0, you just want to have y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. What this will do is it'll graph that function, which is in what we call a parabola shape. Uh, in a parabola, we have some important points, which we'll talk about next week, including vertex, uh, how, what way the, the parabola faces, things like that. But what we're going to look at today is when does this graph right here equal 0? And that's what we want. We want to know when does it equal 0. Uh, and then we're going to look here, and that 0 is on the x-axis. So when is the y value equal to 0? And you can actually click on those points where it crosses the x-axis, where the x value is negative 3 and the y value is 0. These right here are our solutions for when this equation equals 0. So what does the x value have to be for it to equal 0? One of the x values has to be negative 3, and one of the x values has to be negative 1. These also have different names. Sometimes they call them x-intercepts. Uh, sometimes they call them zeros. They call them zeros because that's when the function hits zero for the y. So I just type in the equation, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, and then I look at my graph to see when does it equal zero. It equals zero here, and it equals zero here, at x values of negative 3, whoops, sorry, took it away, and x values of negative 1. So I come over here, and I find x equals negative 3, or x equals negative 1, and then I know that I got it correct. All right, so then I can take a look at another question and do the same thing. So if it says solve using Desmos, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0, then I just come over to my Desmos, delete out my equation. Probably didn't need to delete out the x squared part. And then I just type in this new equation. Uh, again, this one already equals 0, so I'm good to go. And I'm just going to type in y equals x squared. I can use this squared button down here if I want. And then plus 6x. I'll just type that in, plus 8. And again, I do not need to type in the equals 0 because what I'm going to do is look at my graph and figure out when does the y values equal 0. So we come down here. You're coming down here. Has it hit the x-axis yet? Has it hit the x-axis? Nope. It hits it right here. It goes below the x-axis and bounces back up right here. And so this is part of the reason why we have <clears throat> two solutions uh, because it's going to go down and then come back up. And then we'll notice that we get equations that have two x-intercepts or two zeros. And these are our solutions. So we just come over here and we look for x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. And then I would click on that. And then I'm good to go. Uh, and so that's pretty much how you're going to use uh, Desmos to help you solve 
uh, these points. And then from there, uh, I could do this one. We just did this one. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I remember the answers here. I think it was negative 3, negative 1. And we can kind of continue on and go from there. Now, there's one other thing we want to talk about, and that is um, zeros. I don't want to do this one because this is part of your Desmo, so uh, I'm going to purposely pick a wrong answer here. So that's wrong. Oh, you saw the right answer, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and I want to talk about these next questions. So this is asking kind of the same thing. It says, which of the following is the correct pair of zeros? Now, I just want to remind you that a zero is where it crosses the x-axis. So again, a lot of you might not know this, but you can click on these pictures and it shows. So where does this graph right here reach zero on the x-axis? It's going to reach zero here and right here. And so if I count over, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. So it hits a zero at two and it hits one at three. So then I can come over here and find the answer, which is two and three. Now, most parabolas have two zeros. Some parabolas only have one zero. That means that it's only going to touch the x-axis in one spot. And so here it touches it only right here. The graph could turn around right here and have zero zeros. It could have no solution. So when you think about a graph, when does it have no solutions? It doesn't have a solution if it never reaches zero, and we have to figure out when it does. Uh, this one reaches only one time, and if it went below the x-axis, it would reach twice. So again, the question says, how many zeros does it have? Zero is a fancy name for how many times does it touch the x-axis, or where does it touch it? This one only touches it in one place, so it only has one zero. Again, it's possible you could have no zeros. You could have one zero. You could have two. You could never have more than two in an x squared equation because we only expect up to two solutions. Uh, but it's pretty kind of straightforward. Uh, you can have zero, one, or two. Thank you. I got it. So it says, what are the zeros of this one? So I want you to think about it. Where does this parabola touch this axis? Because, again, that's what a zero is. When does it reach zero height or have an, a y value of zero? Does this graph ever get down below zero? In this case, it doesn't. And so when it asks, it almost is like a trick question. What are the zeros? Well, between one and two is where it bottoms out. But does it ever actually touch here? No, so it's not this. Vertex is a fancy name for that turnaround point. So we don't really necessarily care about that. The y-intercept is a zero. Here's the y-intercept. It has an x value of zero. But again, we're looking for y values of zero. Again, when does it touch here? It doesn't, so we would say it doesn't have a zero. Um, we'll just go through a couple more. Uh, I'll kind of show a lot of the answers just to make sure you guys are watching those videos. Um, again, which can possibly be a zero? Just click on there and look at this graph. Where are the zeros at? Now we're looking at the x value. So this x value is a little bit before 1. And this x value, if this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, it's between negative 4 and negative 5, and between 0 and 1. So it says, which 0 can possibly be a 0? Well, negative 3.6, negative 1, 2, 3, that would be right here, and my parabola doesn't touch through there. Negative 5.6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.6 would be over here, so that can't be right. 2.1, that would be way over here. That parabola definitely doesn't touch there. What about negative 4.6? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 4.6. So this very well possibly could be a zero of this quadratic because that's where it touches. But that's what those questions are asking. Um, and so you just go through and you try your best to figure that out. Uh, what we really want you to know today is what is a zero. So I just want to remind you that a zero is where a parabola, a parabola is uh, the, this U-shaped graph, that we get when we type in a quadratic function, the zeros are where the parabola, this red line, touches the x-axis. And it's the x value. So this one has two zeros at negative 2 and negative 4. It's possible to have only one zero if I type in an equation that looks like this. Um, you'll notice this one only has one zero, so it only touches once. And it's possible to even have no zeros 
where the graph never touches um, the x-axis. So this is an example of zero zeros. If I type this back in, um, this one will be an example of just one zero. And then we can also have uh, two zeros. So there it touches no times. Here it touches the x-axis once. And if I went down below a little bit and made another quadratic, um, but I made it go down, remember putting minuses at the end make it go down, the green one here touches the x-axis twice. So we can highlight there. It's the two spots it touches. So this has two zeros. The blue one here touches once, so it has one zero. And then this never touches. Uh, the lowest it goes is a, a y value of four. So this has zero zeros. So zero zeros, one zero. The green one is two zeros. Uh, that's pretty much it today. Just understanding how to find zeros. Have your Desmos open. Uh, that way you can type in the equations if it asks you to type in equations. If it doesn't ask you to type an equation, just look at the graph and look for where it crosses that x-axis. So boop, right here, keeps going down, or yep, then it turns around, goes up, boop, hits the x-axis again. Those are our zeros, which if we were solving and you know, it says equals zero, that's the x values we're looking for. All right, hope that made sense. As always, if you guys have questions, let us know, and we'll get back to you right away. Thanks, and have a great week. Couple more weeks to summer break. Talk to you guys later.